Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Friday Arduin Review. I'm Shadow, your host, and today I'm going to be going over Arduin 2. This is more or less a... this is a reprint. But it's more or less a complete, all, all one-stop gaming system for the world of Arduin. It was tech, originally it was two individual volumes. They've now compiled it into one version, and by that I mean the incomparable Emperor's Choice. Um, big fans of everything they've ever done and their entire effort to bring Arduin back to the lands of the living. This book was, I believe, copywritten in 2006, and as for my usual reviews of Arduin, I'm going to go straight to the table of contents and run down the list all the way to book two, which I, you know, I, I've read both of these books before, but, you know, I, I always try to read everything before I do a review for you guys, and I have yet to make it through the second half, which is mostly spells. I believe the book was called Resources, but uh, we'll, we'll go into that next Friday. So let's jump right in, head on over to the table of contents. We'll pass the unfortunate testimonial to David A. Hargrave, Hargrave uh, from, you know, who was born in 46, left this, left this world for the realms of Arduin permanently in 1988. And uh, uh, let's, let's not, uh, like I said, start this out with, with a, on a, on a down note. Chapter 1 is the Welcome to Arduin and all of the things you'll need to play this game. Pretty straightforward dice, paper, pens, graph paper, uh, miniatures if you've got them. You know, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of miniatures. And the Emperor's Choice miniatures are no exception. Some of the nicest miniatures ever to have been made in original lead or pewter or white metal, as it was called. I, I'm not sure if any of them were made in lead. I think I... I think the Julie Guthrie original ones were lead, but I'd have to double check. The next chapter is character, character creation, which mostly covers all of the non-human races as well as humans like Amazons, etc. Um, of course, our favorite, the Deodents, and my son's favorite, the Franks, are all covered in here with, you know, roughly a, a page, half a page to a full page description and details that, that you know, most of you guys, if you're Arduin fans, you should probably know most of this stuff, but if not, it's all right here, ready to go. Chapter 3, the character classes, the warrior, the barbarian, the martial artist, paladin, witch hunter, forester, beastmaster, thief, bard, traitor, Kurtzian, assassin, techno, which I'm going to stop right real quick for techno. Techno is actually everything you'd hope for, a full-on high-tech scientist, gimmicker, mechanical genius, all rolled into one, and as you go up in levels, you just get more and more information and you're able to create more and more fantastic technological devices from door hinges to laser blasters you name it if you stick with that profession you'll 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 you'll, you'll learn all of that that cool stuff then the mage classes the wizard the priest the alchemist the druid the medicine man the herbalist the original star powered mage the rune weaver the rune singer the illusionist saint sage and special class situations normals and split class characters. Normals are everything from bartenders to blacksmiths to, you know, uh, porters and torchbearers and anything that you can imagine that isn't already covered. You pretty much can make up your own uh, normal character type class and, and run them, you know, for whatever reasons, if you want them as NPCs or if you want them as player characters, everything's right there. And then the rules for split classing characters, which, you know, a lot of people don't like split classing, but I do. But with Arduin, seeing as how they go up so high in level or can, and you really want to, you know, max them out before even contemplating that, chances are you, you're you probably not going to do a lot of split classing. Then chapter four is individualizing the character, special, special abilities, hit points, speed, Magic points, basically called mana, the senses, all the different skills, outfitting the character, experience, the experience point system, which is a little bit different than most games, but a, a lot of familiar things you'll you'll see. Just how many points you get and what you get them for. That's the, that's the real key there. And then aging, and you know all races 
age differently, and all of this is covered right there, you know, as you would pretty much expect. Uh, I, I'm not sure if their elves live as long as some of the old school elves that can live up to 10,000 years, but, you know, how many player characters really get to, you know, run their character for, you know, even a thousand years, so I really wouldn't worry too much about that. Chapter 5 is all about combat, which is pretty complicated for a game system, but mind you, this is kind of an old system, and he, that being David A. Hargrave, really, you know, in my opinion, he was the first guy to come up with a critical hit, the critical miss or fumble, and, and a lot of other innovations that he created way back in the day. Um, this combat section includes everything from the mechanics of combat, techno weapons, aerial combat, escape and evasion, and brawls, fisticuffs, and punch outs. Chapter 6 is the chapter all completely dedicated to magic, uh, your resistance, and things like that. The, the basics of magic, the combat magic, special topics, and of course all the spells are in the second book, which we'll go over next Friday. Chapter 7 is all the rules on your saving throws and chances to survive, you know, all kinds of things from fireballs, traps, poison gases, diseases, etc. Chapter 8 is character development and conclusion. More of David A. Hargrave's personal opinions on all of the basics of role-playing squeezed into about about four or five pages. Then the appendix with all the price lists, the different coins, which, you know, there are a lot of different coins to keep track of in this game, and you can, you know, simplify that by leaving things out or, you know, just, you know, skipping them entirely. And, and I hear from uh, the people at Emperor's Choice uh, that they're going to reduce all of the different kinds of coins to make it a little bit more manageable because I think at last count there were like 50 different types of coins to keep track of and that's just, you know, it, it makes for interesting treasure when you find it, but after a while, you know, you have to have a page just to list all the different kinds of coins and their value and trying to find a money changer can just be, you know, just, just too much of a hassle. It also includes the gems and other valuables, weapon prices, armor prices, food and drink prices, odd edible items, exotic foodstuffs and preparations, container prices, water, transport, etc. And then the appendixes, which um, let's see what are the appendixes that we jump over here. I, I think it's mostly just tables and charts. And also the character sheets and the worksheet which you will need to calculate your different stats by adding and multiplying different things to get your actual stats. This is the character sheet, trip ticket, basically just forms that you will need, all of which I'm sure are free to photocopy for your own needs. Cheesy bookmark. So there you have it. This is book one. Book two is obviously a bit thicker, but I will get through this between uh, now and next Friday. I really actually like this this book a lot because it really does simplify a lot of things in, in, into one handy volume that uh, I don't know the actual price for it, but you can go to Emperor's Choice. Maybe they'll give you a discount if you mention the channel name. Maybe they'll send you something as a bonus. I, I, I know the guys over there are just absolutely wonderful individuals, and I cannot wait to see what else they have in store for us in the next year or so, because I know they're working really hard on putting out the, the, the ultimate version of Arduin. But if you can't wait, or you just want this to, and to add it to your collection to get a little bit more of the lore, a little bit more information, or you, know, you don't have some of the other books and you just want one complete game, this would be my recommendation as of this moment. Things may change when I read some of the other books left on my list, which is slowly dwindling. Uh, I've covered, you know, I think a good half of all the Arduin books, and I'll continue to do so until I have covered them all. So until next time, folks, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for, you know, watching our channel and all of our guest appearances on so many other people's channels. 
weekend. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Get some gaming in. And like I said before, have a wonderful weekend. We love you guys so very much. You guys have all been so good to us. And we hope we hope you guys will have a wonderful weekend. And you know, make sure you, you hit us up in the comment section if there's anything you'd like to ask me specifically, or if there's anything you want to comment. If you have this book, I'd love to hear your your um, your take on this book. And you know, if there's anything else I can help you guys out with, don't hesitate to ask. You guys know where to find me. Again, I'll see you guys real soon. Bye.